According to incoming information, which is recounted by former Russian commerçant journalist Mikhail Zygar, the real purpose of Putin's trip to Mongolia in early September was a meeting with shamans and cult representatives. According to Zygar, this version is being discussed by sources close to the Kremlin. He writes about this in the authoritative German magazine Der Spiegel. According to the information being retold, Putin needed the blessing of shamans to use nuclear weapons. Allegedly, Putin returned from Mongolia satisfied, writes the former editor-in-chief of Dozd. None of Zygar's sources can confirm this information, but the meeting with the Mongolian shamans apparently took place, the column claims. Social media users note that the information could have been deliberately leaked to Zygar in order to scare the West with the real possibility of nuclear weapons being used through the publication Der Spiegel. However, this version sounds like a big fantasy. None of my sources can confirm it. However, the meetings with Mongolian shamans seems to have taken place. The journalist adds, Zygar draws attention to the fact that Mongolia and Tuva, where Putin visited before his trip to Mongolia, are considered the birthplace of the most powerful shamans in the world. He also recalls that Putin has long been known for his special attitude to mysticism, including orthodox mysticism. Before the war with Ukraine, Putin also consulted with various mystics. Zygar writes, citing a source close to the Kremlin. According to the source, they all predicted Russia's victory. In support of the rumor about Putin's possible fascination with shamanism, a story is mentioned about how, during trips to Altai, the head of the Russian regime took antler baths. They are filled with an extract obtained from the cut antlers of Altai marls. In May of this year, the Russian government's leading proponent of shamanism, Sergei Shoigu, lost his post as defense minister. This didn't seem to affect Putin's relationship with the occult. He simply went to Mongolia and Tuva without Shoigu. There are now rumors in Moscow that Putin needs the blessings of shamans to use nuclear weapons. Without their approval, he could not take such a serious step, fearing to anger the spirits. And he allegedly returned from Mongolia satisfied. These conversations are evidence of how Russian society is developing. Many representatives of the Russian elite are becoming increasingly interested in otherworldly forces. Successful entrepreneurs, people who make the top 10 of the Forbes list, often do not make decisions without first consulting with sorcerers. The popularity of paranormal consultants has increased dramatically in the last five years. This is probably primarily due to the fact that they see no way to influence events in their country. Hopelessness and resignation are the most popular words in Moscow. There is less and less room for rational thinking and irrational factors play an increasingly important role. Germany reinstated border controls on all nine of its frontiers Monday morning, in what it says is a crackdown on irregular migration and crime following recent extremist attacks. Temporary mobile police checks were spotted at Germany's borders with France, Belgium and the Netherlands. In the German town of Elton, along the border with Netherlands, police were seen checking passports of people arriving by bus on Monday. Nine countries border Germany and all are part of Schengen. Germany already imposed restrictions last year at its borders with Poland, the Czech Republic, Austria and Switzerland. The expanded border controls, announced last week, are set to last six months and are threatening to test European unity. Most of Germany's neighbors are fellow members of the European Union, a 27-country bloc based on the principles of free trade and travel. And Germany, the EU's economic motor in the heart of Europe, shares more borders with other countries than any other member state. According to the EU, member states are allowed to temporarily reintroduce controls at the EU's so-called internal borders in case of a serious threat, such as one to internal security. But it also says border controls should be applied as a last resort in exceptional situations, and must be time-limited. Such limitations are often put in place during major sporting events, including the recent Olympic Games in Paris and the European Soccer Championship this summer.